Shalom everyone, so glad you're here. And today we're going to talk about an amazing subject, spiritual warfare, the end times and the book of Esther. I'm going to reveal to you 12 secrets in the book of Esther that the Lord has shown me about spiritual warfare and things that we need to know to be equipped during these end times. I'm Jennifer Guetta and I'm a biblical archaeologist and I came to know Yeshua through dreams and through a supernatural experience. If you want to know my testimony, you can go online to awestruckbyglory.com. You can also see my book there and uh, you can read my entire story. But today I want to just show you what God revealed to me about amazing keys in the book of Esther that are very important for these end times. Let's first look at the story itself. The story of Esther takes place between the Old Testament and the New Testament in the ancient Persian Empire in the 4th century BC. And it's all about a Jewish girl, an orphan girl who was chosen by the king of Persia to be a queen. And then all of a sudden, Mordechai, her uncle, comes and reveals to her a plan that the, uh, the enemy Hammam has to annihilate the Jewish people. And he says to Esther in Esther 4.14, perhaps you have been chosen for such a time as this. And Esther has to go to the king to unveil herself, to, to show, tell about who she actually is and to plead for the salvation, for the help of her people. And God turns everything around. It's an amazing story of great courage. And there's so many lessons into it. So let's first talk about the first, the first lesson. The first secret is the secret of hiddenness. The, the, throughout the entire book, there is a theme of hiddenness and secrets being revealed. Uh, the name of Esther itself is called Hidden. And when you combine it with Megillah, which is the scroll, scroll is related to revealing. So it's actually the revealing of the hidden. And it reminds us also of, uh, for example, the hidden spirit realm all around us that we do not see, but we know it's there. In the entire book, God is not mentioned once. He is hidden. It's like he is there. They, he is in control. Uh, but we know he's there, but we, they do not mention him. And the Esther, of course, hides herself until the very last moment when she steps out. Uh, it also reminds us prophetically of the bride of Christ that is revealed during the end times. Uh, for all creation is waiting, right, for the bride of Christ to be revealed. And uh, it also reminds us specifically of the hidden Messiah that has been hidden for 2,000 years and then comes out and reveals himself. Did you know that here in Israel, we, we wear masks on Paso of uh, on Purim, and they are they really reveal the story of the hidden of something being hidden that will be revealed so prophetic for such a time as this it's time to take off those masks amen anyway the second secret is turning of tables that god will turn everything from to that that what the enemy meant for evil god will turn to good and that's exactly what happened in the Esther story. Mordecai had a plan to kill the Jewish people, but God stepped in and inspired Esther to go forth to the king and expose evil and plead for her people. And because of that, God turned everything around completely. And what, you know, it turned out to be something good. A third, a, the third secret is knowing your authority and having special access to the king. Esther represents, of course, also the bride of Christ, the, the, the Jewish people, but also in the new covenant, the bride of Christ. And 
It is knowing your authority, knowing that you can go to the king directly, that you have access for such a time of this, things that other people don't have. You can go to the king and plead for the people. Amazing. Another secret from the book of Esther is bathing in the Holy Spirit and in the anointing. Esther bathed for a whole year in, the, in, in oil. Can you imagine? And it is the, through the Holy Spirit that we can do this. And then when the time came, Esther, in the last, the next secret, the fifth secret is the prayer and the fasting. Because Esther turned around and she said, Let, uh, let's three days, she called her people for three days for prayer and fasting. And that gave her courage to go up to the king because she had to lay her life down. You see, it wasn't just anybody could go to the king. If you went to the king uninvited, it would have meant death. So she was laying her life down. She didn't know how he would react. And only if the king handed out his scepter would she be safe. And she had to take that risk. And that is the sixth secret. The sixth secret is that she had to have so much courage to lay down her life. As is written in Revelation 12, 11, where it says, we will defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. We love not our life until death. This is the secret to spiritual warfare in the end times. We need to lay down our lives, stand up, expose evil, and speak the testimony of Jesus and ourselves, but also love not our life unto death to be able to give up everything. And that's what Esther did. Um, it's an amazing, amazing uh, concept. Another uh, secret that is written in the book of Esther is the concept of time. A lot of things are all about time in the book. And the, actually Purim is the, uh, the word means lots. So it's the feast of lots. And it shows that God is in control and God is providing on his perfect time. And that's why he calls Esther, for such a time as this, you have been prepared. This is also for you, the bride of Christ. You have been prepared for such a time as this. Amazing. And uh, anyway, the next secret is the secret of the decrees. There's many decrees in the book of Esther. And one of them is the decree of death, which comes from Hammam. But at the end, the uh, and the decrees were irrevocable. You couldn't change it. But what did the king do to change everything? He made a higher decree, a higher decree that went over the first decree. And that saved the Jewish people. And it's very important to understand the concept of decrees because it's also related to spiritual warfare because we can also make those decrees. And another uh, secret is the royal seal and the ring of the king, which we have received from Yeshua, from Jesus, to go forth, make decrees, and speak the word of God and what will happen. And uh, another secret, the tenth secret, is the scepter, which the which the king actually hands out. Esther goes up to the king, and finally he hands her the scepter. And the scepter in ancient Persian times meant mercy, mercy and authority, and ruling. And this is what God hands to us. He hands us His mercy and his authority, and his ruling. And we can go forth through that. The last two secrets. <coughs> it's the secret, first, of joy. The Lord says at that point to increase joy. That's why we see here in Israel many people giving food, giving all kinds of yummy things. That's why we are, we're, we're taught to celebrate. This is in all the biblical feasts. We're taught, to, most of them anyway, we're, we're taught to celebrate because God has done a great victory. And when God does a victory and defeats the enemy, we need to celebrate and, and be joyful about it. The last one 
The last secret is proclaiming the miracle and letting people know. And when we write the miracle and proclaim it and testify about it, we are actually prophesying over others so that they can be saved too. And that is so very important. Anyway, I want to challenge you today to step up like Esther, to know who you are in Christ, to know you are the bride of Christ and you have been made for such a time as this. Even in these end times, look what's happening. Iran is again trying to build up all kinds of things, all kinds of threats. And the enemy might have be coming against you in some way. But you are the bride of Christ. The Lord has called you for such a time as this. So bask in his Holy Spirit. Pray and fast. <coughs> Pray and fast. And step up like Esther did. Don't be afraid to reveal yourself. Stand out and go and stand up for his people so that people will be saved. Go around and pray for the salvation of the people around you. Go into your room and you have access to the King of Kings, Yeshua, the Messiah. Go to Jesus himself with the access that you have and pray and ask him for the mercy and grace of the people around you and, and pray and love him. Anyway. This is the beginning of uh, of the podcast. I actually have two more podcasts about this. Those are the extended versions on Spotify. If you want to um, hear more, really more about the spiritual warfare part and the details of it, then I refer you to the Awestruck podcast uh, on, on Spotify. And you can do there. There's part one and part two. And you can also read more about things on my website, awestruckbyglory.com, or follow me on Facebook and, of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe also. Lots of love here from the Galilee. And, uh, yeah, may the Lord bless you for such a time as this. And whatever happens right now in the world with these end times, remember, God has already written out a higher decree he has already given the higher decree and the higher decree is through the blood of his son, Yeshua, and he is the salvation for all mankind and he will come soon. All right. Blessings here from the Galilee. Bye. <laughs>